really hard to do is ensure that I was saying that we have this feature extraction. So once we send all this data, the first thing we do is make sure that we can put the freshest data on here.com for uh -huh. Street View. Um, but we have to do processing, so blurring technology um, and other types of post-processing to make sure we not only have the best seamless panoramic view, mm -hmm. but to make sure that any of the kind of proprietary sensitive information goes out. Gotcha. Last week you heard that we acquired a company called EarthMine, mm -hmm. and EarthMine will allow uh, Nokia to do that better and faster than, than previously. Gotcha. It's a, the, the car's hardware looks really similar to what I've been seeing from like the Google Street View stuff, but I assume you guys are doing a lot more because you're actually building the map data and not just taking photos of yes, what's going absolutely. on. absolutely. So the, okay. the LiDAR and the point cloud mm -hmm. and the accuracy in which we're doing is very a uh, unique approach. Mm -hmm. We think that's really interesting to because not only do we want to basically create this archive, but if we want to build a truly 3D world, that has very different data layers mm -hmm. and different information so that you can turn things on and off for the best consumer experience, um, you need a, to build them out that way. So that's really important for us um, to make sure that we're, we're delivering. As you can see, mm -hmm. in the best consumer experience, as you can see in, um, in Nokia Drive, you know, our goal is to make sure we're simplifying the experience so you really focus on turn by turn. Mm -hmm. If most people don't realize that as we collect the road, for example, just this next road we turn on, we have about a thousand attributes that we collect on that street. They're not used or showcased through things like Nokia Maps or Nokia Drive because our goal is to make sure that we deliver the right experience um, and don't overwhelm. As we go past different things like points of interest um, or uh, some of this construction, it's probably worth saying that not only do we collect the data Mm -hmm. like like we're doing right now, but we also partner with uh, approximately 80,000 sources globally. Anyone from businesses uh, that we've had strong partnerships, so when the business, After they add a new business, mm -hmm. we get that added to our database. Um, we also have uh, 100 million usage of our map a day, and we have the benefit of not only along with those usage by getting probe data, mm -hmm. which is really helpful for doing things like our traffic operations to make sure we understand where there's congestion, um, but also on identifying new roads. Very important to us to get that probe data, but consumers also um, who are map geeks like mm -hmm. us also like to give us information um, by going to our website and giving information on how to correct the map. So we're very fortunate not only to have the channel we have, but the dedication of, of usage so that we can continue to improve and know how to maintain that map. Gotcha. Can you get a shot of these crazy fans back here? Yeah. So these are the fans that are cooling down all the hard drives basically in the trunk. Yep. What other sorts of hardware do you guys have back there? So in the back, I don't mm -hmm. know if there's anything kind of yeah, I can't really see anything yeah, here. Yeah, I think in the back it's just all hard drives, right, Bob? Okay. Well, it's uh, you have uh, two computers, and then the uh, CU. Mm -hmm. uh, what do they call that the uh, something unit. But at any rate, uh, mm -hmm. and then the hard drives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so what you're looking at now, this this software is not only to to give an indication of mm -hmm. where we are and logging that information. This is, we're just on a test route, but if we were driving a path that would actually give you the optimal route as well, okay. where to drive and, and uh, make sure you're doing that safely. Okay. It's See? called the, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, it's, it's called the compute unit. Okay. And uh, we have two hard drives uh, housed in there. So you can see on the screen on Nokia Maps a couple other things coming up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things you'll see on the bottom is a speed alert or speed limit. So those are actually where the posted signs are, mm -hmm. or, or the um, the, unof the official but unposted sign based uh -huh. on uh, how the speed limits work in the county or city. Um, you'll see that's one of the things we're focused on. Speed limits change a lot. Mm -hmm. So having the video or the uh, LiDAR record of the world helps us identify those speed limit signs and make sure we have them uh, very accurate. And how long have you guys been uh, basically building up these, you know, the crazy vehicles that can take all those <laughs> sorts of data? 
So we've had mm -hmm. different evolutions of NavTech True, mm -hmm. which is what you're sitting in right now for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Yeah, we've changed the technology, we've improved it, mm -hmm. um, and had it more scalable, but starting in 2000, late 2010, right? Yes, uh, yeah. well, I thought it was February of 2011, mm -hmm. but it, oh. it, it could go back that far. I mean, that's my understanding as to when they first started collecting with these vehicles. Gotcha, okay. Uh, testing it before that. Yeah, and before that we we had uh, vehicles that had different cameras mm -hmm. um, and and collection systems, but our goal was always at the time to have a reference, right? So we didn't do that much uh, feature extraction or automation off of it. It was really just as a kind of a back cover, so to speak, to mm -hmm. help support um, the geographers who went back after they drove the roads mm -hmm. to be able to have a reference to code the information. Have you used Apple's Maps product to see, like, kind of what they force upon their users? I have used uh, Apple Maps as well mm -hmm. as other map providers. I think, not, I don't want to comment on my consumer right, right. experience, um, but I will say that map making is a hard thing. Mm -hmm. It takes really a hybrid approach of making sure that you have the right data and the right consumer experience. Um, and that's what Nokia is dedicated to. Gotcha. Cool. Well, thanks for the ride along. Very cool stuff.